And now here's a report from Sam Donaldson. Howard, I couldn't help thinking when I was watching Pierre Salinger and Frank Mankiewicz that the nation was first introduced to those two gentlemen when they were both press secretaries for someone else. Salinger, of course, for President John F. Kennedy. I remember that the press corps uh, challenged Salinger to a 50-mile hike, a fitness test. I thought that was a great idea. Salinger backed out. Now, 10 years later, I know why. I think it's a silly idea. Mankiewicz uh, first burst on the, the nation, I suppose, in a very, very awful uh, way, uh, not awful from the standpoint of any of his doing. But he was the man who had the sad task of announcing in Los Angeles that Senator Robert Kennedy was dead, assassinated out there. He did it with great dignity. He held his uh, composure, although inside uh, he was torn apart, as was every other member of the Kennedy camp and most of us across the nation. Mankiewicz and Salinger, still two old political pros, still working for Democratic candidates. Let's look at the presidential board now and take a look at the latest figures. Uh, President Nixon, of course, uh, leading Senator McGovern with 4% of the precincts in. Uh, we, we should warn that those figures, uh, as far as percentage, are misleading uh, as far as the uh, 67 versus 32. They are from rural areas and small states. Uh, New York's polls have not closed. Senator McGovern may do better in New York. Massachusetts, Senator McGovern may take. That state's polls are not closed. The big cities, Philadelphia, Chicago, they have yet to report. You see another couple of people on that uh, uh, list. Uh, John Schmitz, the American Party and Benjamin Buck of the People's Party. John Schmitz is the man who is uh, running in place of George Wallace. He's running on the party that George Wallace founded four years ago. Wallace got 13 and a half percent of the votes. Schmitz probably will not get that. He's not on enough ballots in enough states and he hasn't of course waged the campaign that Wallace was able to wage. Now Schmitz's uh, slogan incidentally uh, he says can be summed up this way that we ought not to get into a war that we do not intend to win and that people who work ought to live better than people who don't. There are other parts of the platform, though, of the American Independent Party that Schmitz heads. Benjamin Spock, the pediatrician, the baby doctor, a kindly man, uh, 69 years of age. I believe he's the oldest presidential candidate in the race this year, and I'm counting all of the 20 or 22 different uh, people that are on ballots in one or more states. Uh, Spock uh, turned against the war and uh, it became, he said, such a disillusioning experience because uh, Lyndon Johnson had promised him uh, that uh, he would not get into Vietnam. And then when uh, President Johnson did, Spock uh, turned against the president in the war and was uh, one of the activists uh, in the peace movement and, of course, heads the People's Party now and runs for the presidency. ABC's coverage of Election 72 will continue right after this message. Rosalind Russell, Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., Ross Martin. I understand you are interested in finding companionship. A con woman, a con man, each the other's next victim. Five women have disappeared, all Lonely Hearts cases. And one of them has just been found, floating in the Pacific. I have been taken advantage of. I've been had. The Crooked Hearts. Tomorrow night at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time, here on ABC. Arthur Hill. You can't know what might be important in this. A tiny detail, a casual reference. Lee Majors. Well, I get the feeling we're trying to save the girl's life by facing cannons with a baseball bat. At least we can swing hard. We happen to be talking about a murder case. Objection. Leading question, Your Honor. Arthur Hill and Lee Majors star in Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law. I'll try everything I can. Practicing every week on ABC. Patty Duke guest stars as an unwed mother Thursday night here on ABC. We have another uh, projection from the ABC decision desk for the state of Vermont. Uh, ABC News projects that President Nixon will be the uh, winner in the state of Vermont over Senator McGovern. With 4% of the precincts in, you see the percentage of the raw vote uh, that's uh, now recorded. Let's take a look uh, in a recap fashion now of the other states that uh, Mr. Nixon has already uh, carried according to our ABC projection. He's carried Indiana over Senator McGovern. 13 electoral votes. He's carried Kentucky. That's nine electoral votes. He's carried Mississippi. That's uh, seven electoral votes in Mississippi uh, over Senator McGovern. The president has also in the South carried Georgia, 12 electoral votes. He has carried Illinois, according to our key precincts and our ABC projection desk, 26 electoral votes. South Carolina, the president has carried for re-election 
by a very large margin, and Strom Thurmond, uh, the incumbent senator, a Republican there, should have no trouble. We've already projected that he's the winner. In Virginia, the president has carried Virginia with 12 electoral votes. And in Vermont, the one that we have just given you a few moments ago, the president has carried that with three electoral votes. We say that uh, President Nixon has now won, according to our projections, 90 electoral votes. Remember, it takes 270. A moment ago, you saw a picture. Now, I should tell you who that uh, was. That was Linda Jenis, who is running for the presidency. And uh, Linda is, uh, Ms. Mrs. Jenis is the uh, social workers candidate. She's 31 years of age and constitutionally ineligible to be president. But she says, should she win, which is an impossibility, she's only on eight or nine uh, state ballots, then uh, they could change the Constitution. Her uh, running mate, Andrew Pulley, is uh, 21 years of age. He's running for the vice presidency. The Socialist Workers' Party has fielded a number of candidates, though, in various states for the Senate and House uh, seats. And in the Senate, uh, there are four on the ballot. Three of them are not yet 30, the constitutional age uh, for uh, taking a seat in the United States Senate. Youth will be served, but uh, unless the Constitution is changed, uh, should they win, it won't be served uh, this time for the Socialist Workers' Party. We'll be back with more of ABC's Election 72 coverage following station identification. Paul has more daughter trouble when Sally runs away on the Paul Lynn Show tomorrow. <laughs>